Vagrant, and welcome to the vetting process too. Uh, this is me experimenting with a new format. Uh, if I do continue the series, I'll probably talk about two or three uh, two or three stories per episode, but today I'm just going to focus on one. Uh, Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, is yet again in hot water for largely unsubstantiated claims. This particular story comes out following two absolutely tragic shootings on near opposite sides of the country, which has led to the Biden administration putting the spotlight on gun control. Uh, the Politico exclusive article claims that in 2018, Hunter's girlfriend at the time, Haley, threw Hunter's gun into a trash can behind a grocery store, and later went back to find the firearm missing. The trash can was across the street from my high school, so police were concerned the weapons would be used for a crime there, and they began investigating. And this is where the story gets a little weird. Apparently, secret service agents approached the store where Hunter bought the gun and asked to see the paperwork involved in the sale. Like I said, this was in 2018, I believe March of 2018. Unlike presidents, vice presidents only get a very specific brief window after their incumbency to get secret service protection, with limited exception. Obviously, Joe Biden was vice president from 2009 to 2017, so the window would have well been closed for secret service protection, so there's no reason for the service to be involved in this case regarding his son. And as is the case with most of these stories, the, there's no evidence. There's no record of secret service interference in the case, and Joe Biden's spokesperson claims that the former vice president has no knowledge of secret service involvement, which immediately dampens most of the validity of these claims. There were some theories that the Secret Service was providing informal protection at the time, which I believe is a different form of illegality, but more importantly, a sergeant for the Delaware State Police said he didn't know of any such involvement. Political claims have gotten their hands on firearm transaction records for the gun in question, which even the Secret Service apparently couldn't get their hands on, and this work as interesting and quite possibly felonious. On the form, Hunter answers no to a question whether or not he was addicted to or unlawfully used controlled substances such as narcotics, depressants, marijuana, etc. Hunter had been discharged from the Navy Reserve five years prior, as in, in 2015, due to testing positive for cocaine usage. The argument here is that Hunter lied on the form, which is considered a felony. But it's worth asking if he did lie. As I said, there were five years between his discharge for drug use and the events of the article. It's possible that he wasn't even lying. I'm not sure that Hunter had any sort of relapse in his addiction over those five years, and if he didn't, it's arguable that he'd gotten the proper help and was no longer relying on those controlled substances, which would most likely make him eligible for the firearm and thus not lying. I don't think once an addict, always an addict would be a valid argument in the court of law. The firearm in question was eventually returned by an older man who was known to search through those trash cans for recyclables. Now that I've presented virtually all the facts, allow me to share my opinion. This story has more plot holes than Joss Whedon's version of Justice League. There's no lot of, there's a complete lot of evidence, and there's shaky potential felony cases against Hunter, and there's it's also worth pointing out the timing of the story. Right as the Biden administration is ready to put fighting gun violence at the front of their agenda, a story is about Joe Biden's own son disregarding gun safety and lying in order to buy a firearm. This is at best tabloid nonsense that made it too far up the main channel. And at worst, a Republican or otherwise anti-Biden campaign planted this story to invalidate the White House's stance on gun control. There are plenty of valid reasons to oppose President Biden, but using stories based on hunches and what about his son is nothing if not pathetic. Thank you for tuning in.